Hi, I'm Justin Kay, Field Specialist in Horticulture with MU Extension. I'm here today to give a brief overview of foliar disease management in high tunnel tomatoes. The four organisms that can cause foliar diseases are fungi, oomycetes, bacteria, and viruses, although the vast majority of foliar diseases in tomatoes are caused by fungi. Why do diseases occur? Well, these three factors must be present, a pathogen, a susceptible host, as well as favorable environmental conditions. When these three factors converge, it gives the opportunity for a pathogen to infect the host and cause a disease. Three factors we might wanna to consider to prevent foliar diseases are host resistance, environmental modification, and sanitation and crop rotation. In terms of host resistance, there's been extensive breeding of tomatoes to breed for resistance to certain diseases. Cornell University has some great information on disease resistance in tomatoes that can be found in an Excel table format, as well as a Word document format. This is broken down into slicer tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, plum tomatoes, and more. There's also information related to disease resistance in other vegetables as well. Although grafting has been shown to be effective to prevent root-borne diseases like fusarium wilt, grafting alone will not prevent the infection of foliar diseases of tomatoes. Another thing we might want to consider is modifying the environment. Fungi are common disease-causing organisms of foliar diseases in tomatoes. Fungi require a certain amount of humidity, moisture, temperature, and time to reproduce and cause infection. So it's important to monitor the temperature and humidity in our high tunnels to know what the environmental conditions are. You can consider things like automating sidewalls, gable shutters, roof vents, using fans to circulate air, as well as orienting high tunnels perpendicular to prevailing winds for maximum passive ventilation. Also things like wider plant spacing and removing lower leaves can improve airflow in the canopy and reduce the chance of fungal infection. You also wanna over, avoid overhead irrigation as overhead irrigation will increase the duration of leaf wetness and increase the likelihood of a fungal pathogen infection. Sanitation and crop rotation. Many high tunnel growers who've grown tomatoes year after year have started to notice issues with declining yields and disease pressure in their high tunnels. It's important to rotate to other fa plant families to break the disease cycle. You can also consider things like fallow periods, solarization, cover crops, as well as inserting different crops into your rotation. Although tomatoes have proven to be the most profitable crop for high tunnels, there is research into alternative rotations that include strawberries, vine crops, as well as sweet potato slip production. It's important to start with disease-free seeds and transplants and make sure you're sourcing these from a reputable supplier. You wanna clean up any plant debris as well as rogue infected plants and weeds as weeds may act as a reservoir for plant disease. It's important to sanitize your tools, equipment, and things like tomato steaks and also scout for diseases regularly and make sure that you and your employees are washing hands often. The four most common foliar diseases of tomatoes in Missouri are Passolora fulva, gray mold, septoria leaf spot, and early blight. These are all fungal pathogens. And although the pictures can be very helpful in helping you identify what's going on, it's important to correctly identify the disease. The best way to do this is submit samples to the MU Plant Diagnostic Clinic. For a nominal fee, you'll get a laboratory analysis to ensure that the pathogen you're targeting is in fact the pathogen that's infecting your tomatoes. The Midwest Vegetable Production Guide can then help you guide decisions in choosing a pesticide option for management of the fungal diseases. You can pick your crop, pick your disease, and then get tons of information on control options for this disease. So you can see that this information can be sorted based on the restricted entry interval time as well as the pre-harvest interval time. It will also list non-pesticide options, which include some of the preventative control measures that we mentioned previously in some of the slides, as well as pesticide options to use targeting the specific organism on the tomato crop. You'll notice that I highlighted the FRAC code. The FRAC code is important to understand in managing resistance to fungicides of different disease-causing organisms. It's important to rotate fungicides that have different FRAC codes so that you don't build up resistance to these materials. 
it's always important to follow the label. Make sure that you're following guidelines on concentration as well as application intervals. Fungicides are best used preventatively. Some fungicide labels tell you to spray every seven to 12 days. Some tell you to spray every seven to 12 days when conditions are conducive to disease development. You wanna make sure you follow any temperature restrictions, that it's not too hot or too cold to apply materials, wear any personal protective equipment recommended, check whether an adjuvant or a surfactant is recommended to help the material stick to the plant. You also wanna check out the pre-harvest and re-entry intervals, as well as restrictions related to open field versus greenhouse application of pesticides. You also wanna check the pollinator precaution box on the pesticide label to make sure that you're protecting pollinators and the use of your pesticide. And then again, we wanna rotate our active ingredients using those frac codes to manage resistance. There's some great resources that can help. We're gonna include these in the description to the YouTube video. The MU Plant Diagnostic Clinic is a very helpful tool. NC State has some great information on foliar fungal disease management and high tunnel and greenhouse tomatoes. MU Extension has a great high tunnel tomato production guide. Barnell has that awesome disease resistance tomato variety guide. And then the Midwest Vegetable Production Guide is a go-to resource for crop production information as well as pest management information. If you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out.